Hi, I'm Dr. Raymond Douglas. I'm an Oculoplastic and Orbit Specialist here in Beverly Hills, California. And today we're talking about Graves' disease, and we're talking to Dr. Pejman Cohen, who's an endocrinologist here in Beverly Hills, and is an amazing physician who takes care of patients with autoimmune thyroid disease all the time. And since we're talking about Graves, many patients ask us, well, how do I know that I have a diagnosis of Graves? And so where does someone who even thinks that they may have some symptoms of a thyroid abnormality begin to think, well, I might have Graves' disease? Well, the patient with Graves' disease will usually get some pretty strong clues. For example, they may be losing weight despite eating a lot of food. They may have diarrhea. They may get a racy heart or palpitations. They can get a tremor, and women can get menstrual irregularities. Mm -hmm. So these are just you know, kind of general body symptoms that alert the person that something is not right. Okay. And, and usually these symptoms lead them to their primary care doctor, who then may do some screening blood work and now document that the thyroid may be off and then refer them to a specialist. Okay. We talked a bit about the symptoms, and what type of um, testing might be involved to know whether they have Graves' disease? I know many people post their laboratory results online or have questions about their laboratory results and the interpretation, but also they hear about scans and other things like that for the thyroid. Maybe you could tell us a little about what to expect and what your patients experience. Absolutely. The, the laboratory part of diagnosing Graves can sometimes be confusing for patients and sometimes confusing for even some physicians. For me. <laughs> uh, for, 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 for all of us, because one of the laboratory tests that we put a lot of weight on is a test called TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone. And this hormone is actually made by the pituitary gland. And in people who have an overactive thyroid, the TSH number goes down. And so um, in the presence of high levels of thyroid hormone, this marker that we're measuring in the blood called TSH is actually suppressed or low. And oftentimes this, this number can be undetectable in people who have Graves' disease. So that's one of the things that sometimes can be a little bit uh, difficult to understand uh, is, is this TSH number. The thyroid hormone levels, which are abbreviated as T4 and T3, are often elevated. Now sometimes we have milder cases of Graves' disease where the T4 and T3 may be still in a normal range, and sometimes one may be elevated and not the other, but in general, the TSH is going to be low, and the T4 and T3 will either be normal or high uh, in people who have hyperthyroidism. And so this is the first clue that they have a overactive thyroid. I mean, before doing any test, and as you, as you know very well as an oculoplastic surgeon, just looking at the patient can give us a clue yeah. as to whether they have Graves' disease and, and, and examining their eyes. And uh, if you look closely, as I'm, I think you would agree, that probably a quarter um, or maybe 20% of patients with, with Graves' disease will have some eye manifestations, even though that they may not be symptomatic per se, but they have some manifestation of the eye disease when you examine them closely. So the uh, history, the, some of the laboratory tests with the TSH, T3, T4, the physical examination, and then we can start to do more detailed tests and actually look for markers of the autoimmune process in the blood. And these are uh, termed thyroid stimulating immunoglobulin. Sometimes it's called thyroid binding inhibiting immunoglobulin. So we just abbreviate these as TSI or TBII. These are the, the markers that the overactive thyroid is immune mediated. Yeah, and they can get quite complex. Many of the early signs that we see in the eyes, as, as you know, are a redness of the eyes, irritation because the autoimmune disease attacks the tear producing glands, so the eyes can get very red, very irritated. And often that's one of the, the first signs that people will notice as they begin to think about everything else that's been going on in their lives. One short question, what uh, many people ask and have asked me, well, I had a nodule diagnosed in my thyroid. Is that something I need to be worried about as you know this Graves' disease process was developing? Yes, nodules refer to growths or lumps within the thyroid gland. They're very common in the population, and so depending on which study you look at, approximately 
20 to 30 percent of normal people can have nodules or lumps in their thyroid gland and in people who have Graves disease they can have those nodules too so it could be a coexisting uh, condition uh, on top of the background of, of Graves disease and depending on the size and the features of those nodules some of them require a biopsy to make sure that they're not cancerous now fortunately 95% of nodules in the thyroid are benign, but those that have some features on ultrasound uh, will usually be further tested by a fine needle biopsy, which is a pretty easy office-based procedure. Okay. So it sounds like, you know, in patients who notice any of the symptoms that we've, we've chatted about, close collaboration with their endocrinologist, really working through not just the, the diagnostic tests, tests, but examining the patients and really, you know, really taking an interest of their history and all the symptoms that they've been through, always obviously the most important thing. Thank you very much, and we'll Thank have you. some more information very soon.